My name is Joy Blumwini. I'm interested in bringing art, culture, and tech together. And I'm able to do that through my work with the Algorithmic Justice League, which is an organization that spun out of the Media Lab based on some of the work I did while I was a grad student here. The truth of it is I was working on an art project and having fun. And so that led to this project called the Aspire Mirror, where I learned about half-silvered glass, which is a material that looks like a regular mirror if you put something completely black behind it. I thought, okay, what's the next step? What if this could actually move with me as I moved my head in the mirror? So to achieve that effect, that's when I went online to download some face detection software. It wasn't working on my face. So I grabbed the white mask, I put it on my face, I barely get it all over my face and it's detecting the white mask. And it was that moment of seeing a white mask being detected as a human face while my actual human face wasn't detected that made me pause the art project <laughs> and say, wait a second, is this just my face or is there something else going on there? That's how I came to this work. I wasn't, oh, I want to see if AI systems are biased. I was trying to express myself creatively and finding myself blocked in that attempt. The system I was using worked well on my lighter skinned friend's face, but when it came to detecting my face, it didn't do so well. When we analyzed the results, we see that all the companies performed worst on darker females. As we tested women with darker and darker skin, the chances of being correctly gendered came close to a coin toss. Look, male. With our research, all of the American companies we audited stopped selling facial recognition to law enforcement. And part of it was, yes, there was the research, but you also had so many advocacy groups, right, who were pushing uh, policymakers and lawmakers to say that we don't want facial recognition in our communities or deployed in these ways. Now it's not just AI systems that are classifying is this a face. You now have generative AI systems that are maybe creating faces or deep fakes and it's a different world in terms of how many people are interacting with AI, the stories we're telling about AI. So I feel the work is even more relevant than when I started the Gender Shades project. So I think because I initially started with such a controversial technology, I immediately had to see that as a socio-technical conversation, it wasn't just about improving the performance of a system, but improving society and how we decide what technologies we want in the first place.